This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Dead on Mars. Chapter 221, Soul 332, Hope or Death. Tang Yu looked at the letter in Tomcat's paws in a daze before he suddenly shook his head and sneered. Why is it only appearing now? What is it telling me? That Earth's disappearance is just a trivial accident? Whether we live or die is simply based on their whims? That we are puny ants? That our existence actually has no meaning? Tomcat stared at him. Tang Yu flared up in anger. He grabbed the letter from Tomcat's paws, scrunched it up and threw it to the ground. Compensate me the earth? Compensate me seven billion people? There were so many lives on earth, and to them they were no different from toys. Human civilization is nothing worth mentioning. They'll just compensate me for spoiling it. From Tang Yu's point of view, the letter was filled with contempt and scorn. Look at those words and tone. Earth's disappearance was only an operational accident. There were 500 million planets that were vaporized along with Earth. What's the big deal? We'll just compensate one to you. Then what am I? What is my dong? What about all the suffering we endured? Tang Yu slowly crouched down, covering his face as his voice choked. We worked so hard to live on. What was it for? Was there any meaning to that? No, Tomcat walked over and stood in front of Tang Yu, held up his cheeks, and collided its forehead with his. Tang Yu, that's not how it is. That's not how it is. Tang Yu looked up. There's meaning. Tomcat's eyes were shining amidst the shadows. Meaning? That's right. Tomcat stuffed Tang Yu's head into its chest. If you hadn't held on to live to this day, that letter would undoubtedly be worth nothing. Regardless of where it comes from, it's because you've seen it that gives it meaning. Its appearance isn't to tell you that they are some advanced civilization in the universe, nor is it telling you that they are far more advanced and powerful than us, much less are they saying that Earth and humanity is completely meaningless. Tang Yu leaned his head against Tomcat's chest and whispered, then what is it saying? It's telling us, Tomcat hugged Tang Yu tight, putting its cheek against his forehead. Be it you, or miss my dong, your existence, your perseverance, your struggles, your hard work, have meaning. Tang Yu, all of this is meaningful. We have worked so hard, struggling so long to live to this point. We overcame many difficulties and experienced so many disaster and sorrow, and now, all of that has borne fruit to pay us back. It's not denying the value to our existence. It's because you are still alive that there's still hope for the future, Tomcat whispered. That's what the letter is saying. Tang Yu turned agape. Is there meaning to my life? Yes. Was there meaning to my dong's life as well? Yes. Tang Yu's body trembled as he buried his head in the cat's fur, placing all his weight on its shoulders as he gritted his teeth to stop himself from crying. We. We aren't weeds of no value. We aren't space trash that has been lingering on our last breaths. Our. Our existence has meaning. Yes, Tang Yu, Miss My Dong, Tomcat slowly patted Tang Yu on the back and whispered. Our hard work, our cries, have been heard by this world. On the cold night just before he fell into utter despair, Tang Yu broke down and cried. This cold and emotionless universe had ultimately bent down to huge this man, kissing him on the forehead and telling him, you haven't been forgotten by the world. 88.2 degrees east, 17.6 degrees north. This location is within the Isidus Planitia. It's very, very close to us. Tomcat found the coordinates on the map. It began measuring the distance. It's almost at our doorstep. It's northeast of Kunlun Station, in the direction of the Utopia Planitia. Tomcat turned and found northeast as it extended its claw to point. In that direction. How far is it from us? A straight line distance of about, Tomcat did the math. 280 kilometers. Be more precise. I'm using the Isidus Planitia three-dimensional map left behind by old Zheng. Thankfully, Isidus Planitia doesn't have much topographic relief. The calculation won't be too off. The exact distance is 283.1 kilometers. Tomcat quickly gave an accurate figure. 
If we want to reach this location, it will take at least 9 souls on Mars Wanderer, considering how it can move a maximum of 30 kilometers a soul. Let's set off tomorrow. Tang you didn't wish to wait a soul longer. It won't do tomorrow. Tomcat shook its head. We need a soul to prepare. We need to inspect and repair Mars Wanderer, remove the experiment module, bring enough food supplies and enough water. We need to bring the solar panels and finally bid farewell to Kunlun Station. What Tomcat said made sense. Tang Yu was being too eager. A distance of 280 kilometers was indeed akin to being on their doorstep when it came to astronomical scales. But to them, it was an unprecedented trip. With Mars Wanderer's turtle crawl, it needed nine souls to reach its destination. There wouldn't be any assistance along the way, and any accidents had to be resolved by themselves. Furthermore, Tang Yu had to go along this time. It was imperative that they made ample preparations. Tang Yu held his palm against the Hab's inner wall and exhaled lightly. He and Tomcat knew very well deep down. It was almost impossible for them to return once they set off. It was destined to be a one-way trip. Kunlun Station had a total of six units of emergency oxygen equipment. On average, each oxygen candle lasted 40 hours. Six of them provided 240 hours, less than 10 souls. This also meant that Tang Yu's oxygen reserves were severely lacking. They were barely enough for him to reach his destination, but there wouldn't be any excess oxygen for him to return to Kunlun Station. He and Tomcat didn't know what to expect at the coordinates. Would there be a spacecraft waiting there? Or would there be an office with a signboard? Or would it be a barren piece of desert with the letter simply a hoax? It was a risk that they couldn't turn back once they set off. Tang Yu got Tomcat to bring a shovel. If they were unlucky enough to get lost, missing their destination or if there wasn't anything at the coordinates, Tomcat could dig a pit to bury Tang Yu inside. Regardless of the outcome, this was the final stretch Tang Yu would take his life. He was heading out into the complete unknown, with a one-way ticket in hand, walking towards an unknown destination. No one knew what was waiting for him there. Hope. Or death. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Dead on Mars. Chapter 222, Soul 333, Unverifiable. The first thing that needed handling was food and water. After being resupplied by Tianzhou 37, Kunlun Station's food reserves were rather plentiful. However, the Mars Wanderer had limited capacity. Tomcat and Tang Yu were unable to take all of it along. In the morning, just as the sun rose, Tang Yu and Tomcat got up and began preparing. Tang Yu, how much food do you need? In front of Tomcat was a mountain of soft packaging canned food and reconstituted food. It was at a loss, having the desire to take everything but being limited by the capacity. It was a worry worth being happy about. Compared to the earlier days when Kunlun Station only had compressed biscuits for survival, there wasn't any choice. Fifteen days of food will do. Tang Yu was outside the garage. The geolab had been removed from Mars Wanderer. He was clearing out all the apparatus in the lab. The lab was Kunlun Station's only mobile airtight module. It came with four wheels and could move by being attached to the Wanderer. Based on the coordinates, they needed at least nine days. Most of the time, Tang Yu would be wearing the radiant armor, but he also needed to eat, drink, and defecate. Only 15 days? There's only enough oxygen for nine days. Tang Yu threw the heavy spectrophotometer as it slammed into the sand. Fifteen days of food is enough. The dead can't eat. Since I'm not returning, having plenty of food is meaningless. It will only add to the weight and slow down the wanderer. What about flavors? Anything will do except salted squid. Tang Yu turned around and entered the geolab. Soon, there were clunking and knocking sounds. Finally, he took out a computer monitor and threw it outside. Tomcat took stock of each item while Tang Yu perspired heavily inside the garage. The latter had once again regained his strength and drive. He did things swiftly, completely unlike the three souls after the space station crashed. Tang Yu had lived those souls like a walking zombie. He had sat there in a daze with a blank expression, neither eating or drinking. 
In a sense, this letter of unknown origins had extended Tang Yu's life, giving him a purpose to keep living. One. Two. Three. One soul, two souls, three souls. No salted squid. No salted squid. Tomcat counted, trying its best to select tiny, light, and high-calorie foods. For water, it took bottles. Each bottle contained 600 milliliters of water. Under normal circumstances, two bottles of water were enough for a day's consumption. Just like food, 15 days of water was prepared. That meant 30 bottles. The water in Kunlun Station's water tank was precious, but at this stage, all of that was to be abandoned. Tomcat separately packed the food and water, rather carefully arranging Tang Yu's daily menu before labeling them. Tang Yu. Yes? If you're willing to wait, I can make the trip first. It will take at most a month and I'll be back. After I confirm that it's safe, I can return to take you over. I'm not willing to wait. Tang Yu was squatting, dismantling the screws from the table's legs. Got it. Tomcat didn't make another mention of it again. Having cleared the geolab outside the garage, Tang Yu began moving the solar panels. The solar panels were the main source of power for the Mars Wanderer and Tomcat. The last time Tomcat headed out to find the Kelemi, it had taken 30 solar panels with it. It spent nearly 10 hours a day recharging. This time, they planned on taking all the solar panels to shorten the amount of recharging every day. However, these things were bulky and heavy. They could only be bundled together and placed on the trailer. The final form of the Mars Wanderer was like Thomas the Tank Engine. It hauled the geolab with the trailer behind. Food and water were stored in the geolab, while the solar panels were placed on the trailer. This was in a way an overload for the Mars Wanderer, but this was the final mission of its life, so it was only an inconvenience for that final haul. After Tomcat tidied up all the supplies, it stepped into the garage and saw that not far away, Tang Yu was sitting against the Wanderer's wheels. He was looking up with his hands on his knees. It was unknown what he was looking at. You got a cigarette? Tang Yu knew that Tomcat was coming over. Still sitting motionless, he asked in passing. You smoke? No, none of us smoke. The Orion astronauts are forbidden from smoking, Tang Yu replied. Smoking is bad for your health. Tomcat sat down, leaning against him. Looking in the direction where Tang Yu was looking, all it saw was a gray sky. I know it's bad for your health. My dad forbade me from smoking. He once said that he would break my legs if he caught me smoking, but he smokes like a chimney in a way far worse than anyone, Tang Yu said. Now I know why no one in the world would really like smoking, but at times, what can we do apart from smoking? All I can see is a powerless and lost self. Cigarettes are nothing. I can recommend you something more hardcore. Huh? Do you see the hydrogen oxygen tank on Tianzhou 37? The nozzle is a meter thick with more than a hundred tons of thrust. That's hardcore enough. Bro, you can try that. Tang Yu chuckled silently. He took out the letter from his pocket and stared at it blankly. He had already read the letter more than a hundred times. He could even memorize its contents, but Tang Yu still had no idea if it was authentic. It claimed to be from an incredulous advanced civilization. But there was nothing about it that proved this. If it could emit light and speak or fly in the sky, Tang Yu would have acknowledged the ridiculousness of it all. But it was just an ordinary piece of paper. It was unable to prove that it came from an alien civilization, nor could it prove that it was something that came from an earthling. In Tomcat's words, if there were such intelligent lifeforms in the universe, creating pulp to make paper and learning the human language was likely trivial to them. Now, if such a person were to slap a piece of paper like that in front of you, saying that they came from the other end of the Milky Way, you had no way of verifying their claims no matter how ridiculous it sounded. Of course, this might also be Tomcat's way of creating an illusion. Tomcat wasn't one to always speak the truth to Tang Yu. Back when the space station crashed, it had hidden the truth to protect him. It could do anything. For example, fabricate a letter from alien civilizations, coming up with a nonsensical coordinate, claiming that Earth could be restored, 
giving the dispirited Tang Yu the motivation to stand up on his feet again. If it were really a ploy by Tomcat, it had undoubtedly succeeded. It had succeeded in extending Tang Yu's life by at least nine souls. Tomcat. Do you really believe everything that's written in this letter? Do you really believe in such an advanced civilization? Do you believe Earth can be restored? Tomcat received the letter from him. After a few minutes of silence, it shook its head. I don't. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Dead on Mars. Chapter 223, Soul 333, Captain Cook on Mars. Upon hearing this answer, Tang Yu was slightly taken aback. However, it was to be expected. That's right. I don't believe it either. He took out the piece of paper from the envelope. Based on the letter's contents, he was about to head out to file and fight an unprecedented lawsuit. He wanted to request compensation from an incredulous civilization, to get them to compensate the human civilization of all its losses. Tang Yu had never been in a lawsuit before. He had never filed it against humans, much less aliens. He didn't even know what his opponent would be like. Just based on the tone of the letter, the culprit that sparked off everything had the ability to instantly vaporize millions of stars in an instant. To the humans on Earth, they were no doubt a godlike existence. And Tang Yu was about to face the gods alone, to sue God in court. This sounded akin to an African guerrilla's lawsuit against a particular human construction company, requesting that they compensate it for the destruction of tropical rainforests. Humans would probably imprison the gorilla in the zoo and let it tour the globe as a spectacle. Tang Yu folded the letter into a paper plane and threw it out. Cut the bull sheep. Scram, go back where you came from. Whoever believes you are stupid. Wait and see. Asterisks holes. None of you are going to foeing run away. I'll sue the pants off you. Tang Yu roared at the horizon with all his might. Bastards. Fo you. Fo. 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 Fo your mother. Tomcat sat by the side, watching the paper plane draw out a trajectory like a rock before falling onto the sand. Tang Yu's vulgarities had been accepted by the world, but unfortunately, there wasn't any reply. Exhausted from his shouting, he turned to pat Tomcat on the head. Let's go. It's meal time. I don't have to eat. Then return to have a recharge. Tomcat was bent over the desk. With a scratch, it drew out a 60-degree angled curve on a piece of paper. Then, it cut out the fan-shaped cutting and used a ruler and pen to mark fine markings in it. What are you doing? A sextant. Tomcat pulled out a thread from the drawer. Biting through it using its teeth, it pulled straight and measured its length. Sextant? Tang Yu wasn't too familiar with the term. An antique from centuries ago. None of you use it these days, but at the beginning of the century, learning how to use a sextant to determine one's location was a requisite for pilots and astronauts. Tomcat tied one end of the string to a screw as a weight. It raised it up high and shook it a little. We will be traversing hundreds of kilometers of desert. Using a sextant will allow us to accurately determine our longitude and latitude. Of course, the premise is that the sextant is precise enough. Tang Yu opened a packet of beef. Turning his head to glance at the crude tool in Tomcat's hand, he realized it was made of easily obtainable materials in Kunlun station paper, pen, screws, nails, pen container, thread, multipurpose glue. No matter how he looked at it, it looked crude and simple. He couldn't help but worry over its precision. The simpler something is, the more reliable it is. It's because often, such simple-looking tools are based on the most basic and stringent mathematical calculations and physical laws. And they do not have any bugs in them. Tomcat narrowed one eye, using a needle dipped in ink to draw markings on the piece of paper. It held its breath and focused as it drew the lines meticulously. It was as though it was about to carve out a flower from random trash. Don't we have any other means of navigation? Such as? Tomcat slowly wrote down a tiny 51.000. This number's length didn't exceed a millimeter. GPS? Tang Yu thought for a moment. How would there be GPS on Mars? 
There's no GPS here, no Beidou navigation satellite system, no GLONASS, no Galileo. Tomcat shook its head. There's also no China Mobile, China Telecom, or China Unicom. Think about it. To not even have those, how can there be GPS? Then what did we rely on for navigation in the past? We have never gone that far out before. To head 300 kilometers into the desert alone would be akin to suicide under normal circumstances. Back when Old Wang and the rest were still around, the geological inspection never exceeded 15 kilometers, Tomcat said. Back then, our navigation relied on the United Space Station. Tang Yu silently chewed on a mouthful of beef. Since time immemorial, navigation has been an extremely difficult task. Despite proliferating on Earth for more than 10,000 years, it was only in recent years that you completed the means of accurate global positioning. So what gave you the illusion that it's easy? That determining your location is a simple matter? Tomcat said indifferently. Even though we have the ability to escape Earth's gravitational reach, and have the ability to fly more than 100 million kilometers, we will still need to use the wisdom and experience of our ancestors on such matters. Tang Yu finished drawing the markings on the fan-shaped paper. It raised it to show Tang Yu. In an era without radio and GPS, Captain Cook had relied on this thing to accurately determine his direction to cross the Pacific Ocean. Tang Yu turned his head to look at Tomcat. This cat had one foot on the chair, holding the tiny piece of paper with its two paws high. To it, this was the fruit of labor deserving of its pride. At this moment, Tang Yu also noticed that the in its hand was a protractor, a protractor made of white paper. A sextant was an angle measuring tool, in essence, a protractor. Highly precise angle measurement allowed one to accurately determine one's longitude and latitude. It wasn't that Kunlun Station didn't have one, but those tools meant for drawing figures weren't of any use. It was because their precision was lacking. Tomcat had to do everything itself. Tomcat and Tang Yu were heading for their destination with this sextant. Isidus Planitia looked like an endless desert without any landmarks. Getting lost meant death, therefore, Tomcat's drawing of the markings was crucial. It was why it had spent so much time and effort to produce the tool. Tang Yu suddenly found it embarrassing and ridiculous. So all their seemingly miraculous advanced technology was nothing but a farce. The moment Earth vanished, they had been thrown back to their primal states, having to use the most ancient means to solve problems. They were Captain Cook on Mars. What are you laughing at? Tomcat rolled its eyes. It carefully clasped the paper-made protractor with a book. Don't look down on its simplicity. This thing is now the most precise angle measuring tool in the universe. Whether we can accurately arrive at our destination all depends on it. The wanderer had something better, but when its head was squashed flat, all of that was gone. Tomcat sighed. The last time it had driven the wanderer out, it had fallen into an old underground river on its trip back. The vehicle had plunged headfirst, and the husky became a bulldog. Nearly all the equipment at the front of the vehicle was put out of commission. After Tang Yu finished the beef, he drank a cup of orange juice. Kunlun Station now had a pile of food that he couldn't finish. It was enough for a Manchu Han imperial feast, but he didn't have the appetite for it. The radiant armor was hung on the wall for charging. The compression air canisters were already prepared. When they set off tomorrow, the radiant armor's air canister would provide him for eight hours of air. After it was depleted of its oxygen, he would switch to an emergency oxygen-creating unit. I'll do another check on the oxygen. Tang Yu got up. When shall we head out tomorrow? Your choice. Tang Yu stood there for a few seconds. Let's do it at dawn then. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Dead on Mars. Chapter 224, Soul 333, Eve. That night. Tang Yu lay in bed, clinging tightly to his blanket with only his head peeking out. The rotation of the fan blades produced a soft hum that sounded like a mosquito. The temperature in the living quarters was maintained at 20 degrees Celsius, but the temperature outside had already dropped to minus 60 degrees Celsius. There was a pale yellow light seeping in through the gap of the curtains. Tomcat wasn't resting yet. It was still making preparations and packing for tomorrow's expedition. 
Tang Yu listened to the familiar noises. Tomcat was rolling up maps. With the Mars Wanderer heavily damaged, it didn't have a single intact monitor. They had no choice but to use paper maps. Tang Yu looked at the tiny lights on the ground. They seemed to jog memories of his youth. When he returned home during summer break, he would live in his old bricked house. Every night, the young him would lie in bed wrapped in blankets. The warm light would seep in through the gaps in the door and occasionally his grandparents would tiptoe over to cover him. Whenever that happened, he would immediately close his eyes to feign sleep, opening them again when the elderly person had gone. He didn't know why he would recall these. The old house had already been demolished, and his grandparents had passed away when he was in college. Now, even Earth was gone. No one was around to prove that they had once existed. All of that only existed in Tang Yu's memories. Tang Yu repeatedly ruminated over these memories that ran from childhood to adulthood. It went from the television and ice popsicles he had at his old house in the village to the time he was training in Lop Nur with old Wang at Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. He tried hard to confirm each and every detail the opening theme to Young Justice Bao that was replayed year after year, the words on the paper used to wrap the ice popsicle, old Wang rummaging through his backpack beside the bonfire only to take out two secretly stashed Qingdao beer. Tang Yu was afraid that he would one day forget these people. Unfortunately, memories were the hardest thing in the world to solidify. One could try hard to mold them into the image of someone, and no matter how lifelike it was with each strand of hair defined and clear, they would still slowly lose their definition like sand. Eventually, all that was left was a smooth, featureless blob. Even if one stared at it all day, nothing could be gleaned from it. Tang Yu closed his eyes, whispering, are you still there? There was silence. A cup of water was placed beside Tang Yu's bed. Beside it was a wooden frame with a picture inside. It was a group picture of the astronauts of Orion I before they set off from Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. Commander Old Wang and Thomp stood in the middle at the back. To their sides were Old Zheng and Max. Tang Yu and Mai Dong were crouched in front, with all six of them holding each other by the shoulders smiling. The girl had one hand holding down the hair at her ear due to the strong winds. Old Wang's eyes were squinted due to sand. He bared his teeth and was just about to curse, but before he could break out into expletives, the camera had fixed that moment forever. In the distance was the huge launch pad under the blue, sunny skies. The manned spacecraft was still being assembled. On the floor beside the bed was a pair of slippers. In the corner of the room was a plastic trash can. Hanging on the wall were pants, shirts, and empty hangers. Tang Yu's room was very simple. He didn't have much he needed to take with him. Tomcat? Tang Yu pulled out his arm from under his blanket, using it as a pillow for his head. I'm here. A cat's head peeped in through the curtains. Why aren't you sleeping? We will be setting off early tomorrow morning. I can't sleep, Tang Yu said. Nervous? Tang Yu shook his head. Anxious? Tang Yu shook his head. Terrified? Tang Yu continued shaking his head as he looked at his hand. Do you know that human emotions are built on the fact that one is alive? Only with life will there be emotions. But I'm no longer able to find the reality of life for myself. At times, I suspect I've become a puppet who doesn't sense or know anything. I don't feel any temperature when I touch myself. Compared to you, I'm more like a robot. Don't doubt yourself. Tang Yu was stunned. Don't doubt yourself, Tomcat repeated. It walked over to hold Tang Yu's hand. The paw's meaty part was pressed against his palm. Look, how is there no temperature? Never ever doubt the value and meaning to your existence, no matter how dire the situation is. Even if no one in the entire world admits it any further, even if there's no witness or recording of it, you have to firmly believe that your life is the most precious thing in the universe. You have to believe that you are unique in all of the universe. You can live on. You have to live on. Tang Yu slowly nodded. Whenever you encounter an uncrossable chasm, tell yourself that. Tomcat smiled. It's because in this world, no one else will believe in you except yourself. Sleep well. If you can't sleep, count sheep. 
It released Tang Yu's hand, turned, left the sleeping quarters, and drew the curtains along the way. Tomcat sat on the table piled high with paper and charts. The long numbers were dazzling to the eye as if they were some cryptic code. Tomcat was like an astronomer in ancient times, doing something no one understood. Before large aperture telescopes and computers were invented, the daily work of astronomers was math. They would use pen and paper to calculate, handling massive amounts of observation data before finding a brand new celestial body in the massive amount of data. To lay people, astronomers of that day and age were mysterious and unfathomable. People even believed that they could see the future. This was because the numbers on these people's scrap paper could predict full solar eclipses. Tomcat was doing something similar at the moment. Using a sextant allowed it to obtain the latitude, but it wasn't able to directly observe the longitude. To obtain one's longitude, other methods were needed. Tomcat was going through an extremely precise star catalog. This thing helped prevent them from getting lost in the desert. 11. 261.233.541 155.355.715 12. 200.351.547 399.241.955 Tomcat sat in its chair motionless. It held a pen in its paw with a charging cable connected to its back. Its furry body was curled into a ball as its long fur was fluttering in the breeze. 12, 26.413.273 12, 274.360.669 It muttered softly and calculated as it wrote inside a chart. The clock was ticking away. There was silence from the sleeping quarters since Tang Yu had finally fallen asleep. Deeper into the night, the amount of paper piled on the desk became taller than Tomcat. These papers had numbers that were the results of a calculation and not the calculation process. Without Tang Yu, Tomcat didn't need to show its work to anyone. It did all the calculations mentally, but due to the massive amounts of data, there was not enough white paper. Eventually, it had to reuse some of the scrap paper. Tomcat tidied the data and stacked them together before placing them into a drawer. If there wasn't an accident, these sheets of paper would stay there till the end of the world. Sunday, 10 o'clock, 102.543.027 Friday 0102023 Next is Saturday 0 0010.2548.227, 104.424.152, 212.240.270, 01 195.544.473 Next is Sunday. 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 Sunday, where is it on Sunday? After an unknown period of time, Tomcat put away its pen in satisfaction and exhaled, declaring that everything was a success. The sunlight beneath the horizon had already illuminated the sky. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Dead on Mars. Chapter 225, Soul 334, Goodbye, Kunlun Station. Airtight seal is working fine. Internal pressure, 42 kilopascals. Tang Yu turned the seal on his wrist as it produced a light click. The glove was locked in place, indicated by a green light. HUT fully operational. Shoulder joints A OK. Elbow joints A OK. Wrist joints A OK. Lower limb joints A OK. LTA fully operational. Life support system A OK. Liquid cooling A OK. Average heat dissipation 300 W. Internal temperature 22 degrees Celsius. Oxygen circulation at 17 liters per minute. Tang Yu tapped the control terminal on the back of his hand as the glass visor reflected figures that rapidly changed. Tang Yu reported them as they flashed past. Remaining battery capacity, 97%. CCA AOK. -OK. Communications AOK. -OK. He reached out his hand and pressed the opening button on the airlock hatch. A soft fan whirred into action as the airlock pressure began rising. 
Finally, it was in equilibrium with the hab. The bolt retracted as the hatch slowly opened. Tang Yu turned around and gave Kunlun Station one long look. The hab was tidied neatly, with the workstation chassis placed under the table. It had been switched off and its plug pulled. It had finally escaped the devilish claws of Tomcat. No one would squeeze everything it had again. The computer monitors were placed with their backs facing each other on the table. The chairs were lined up against the wall in a row, and all the paper had already been put inside drawers. The table was clean. Even the cups and clock were lined in a row, just like an inspection at a military retreat. The OGS remained switched on, but it was running at its lowest power output. Tomcat had mentioned that it could last 15 years, something Tang Yu wasn't too sure of. However, as long as the OGS remained operational, all life on Kunlun Station would continue to survive. The plants were sitting high on the racks. Tang Yu and Tomcat had used a rubber tubing to make a drop dispenser. The water inside Kunlun Station's water tank would be drawn to water the plants. They had also filled the containers with soil and fertilizer, greatly broadening the tomatoes' lifespans. Tang Yu cast his gaze on the tomatoes with lush leaves. He paused at each plant for quite some time. The most luxuriant one was first. Beside it was second. There was third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, and eleventh. Daddy will be going on a faraway trip. I'll be going somewhere very, very far away, to fight a very, very difficult war. You have to take good care of yourselves. Make sure to take good care of yourselves. Be good. This is Mars Wanderer. Copy. Tomcat's voice sounded over the earpiece. Tang Yu stepped into the airlock as the hatch closed behind him. With a click, it was sealed shut. Step after step, he walked through the six-meter-long cylindrical room before pressing the button that opened the outer hatch. The air inside the room was rapidly emptied and the moment the hatch opened, Tang Yu said to the Martian land that greeted him, I'm out. It feels all right. Tang Yu had already moved all the necessities onto the Mars Wanderer. Now, it was truly like Thomas the Tank Engine. Behind it was the Geolab with food, oxygen, and water inside. Behind the Geolab was a trailer that had solar panels tied to it. This was all of Tang Yu's and Tomcat's luggage. Tomcat sat in the driver's compartment to check on the Mars Wanderer's condition. It was already in a bad state, with its front smashed flat. Its frame was warped and all the glass had shattered. The driver's compartment was an airy broken shack. The only thing still usable was the steering wheel, accelerator, and brake. Tang Yu had seen manual tractors used by farmers in a museum, and he had mused that they gave off vibes of diesel punk. They were purely mechanical without any liquid crystal glass. Now, the Mars Wanderer had also turned into a genuine manual tractor. Tomcat stuffed the map underneath the dashboard and the letter in the sun visor. Then, it turned the steering wheel and pressed the accelerator, only to be stunned. There was something in the glove compartment. Tomcat took it out. It was a wooden frame. It smiled and propped the frame up, carefully placing it on the Mars Wanderer's dashboard. Tang Yu buried a portable hard disk into a pit, the same pit that he had dug for his grave. In it was a copy of humanity's developmental history while the original copy was stored on Kunlun Station. He had built a tomb for the departed human civilization before the sun rose. Amidst the darkness of pre-dawn, he shoveled the soil and buried the hard disk bit by bit before stabbing the shovel in. Mars wasn't the moon. The footsteps on the moon could be preserved for hundreds of millions of years, but the sandstorms on Mars would change the terrain. It was unknown how long this tiny tomb could last, but if everything went as expected, this shovel was the destination of humanity. Tang Yu took a step back and stared at the shovel's handle before bowing. Tang Yu, the sun is about to rise, Tomcat reminded him. I know. Tang Yu circled around Kunlun Station and patted the Kelami probe which was still sitting in the sand. It had its solar panels extended as its indicator lights blinked once a second. Even though it had been robbed of a temperature control chip by them, it didn't seem to mind. Every day, the Kelami watched the sunrise and watched it set, just like an elder who had experienced the vicissitudes of life. We are leaving. 
I'm sorry we can't take you along. Tang Yu stood in front of the Kelami. Bid us farewell. Blink if you are saying goodbye. The Kelami's faint light blinked. Goodbye. Tang Yu took a step back as he waved. He passed by the garage, and inside were the stacked containers used to contain feces. Tomcat had even arranged them neatly. All the tools were stored away in boxes or hung on the walls. Tang Yu closed the garage door and pushed the bolt closed. Tang Yu had one last hug with the descent vehicle of the Eagle. It was this spacecraft that had saved my dong back then. Every day he went out on a stroll, he would often visit the Eagle to have an idle chat with it, talking about anything under the sun. The Eagle was an excellent listener. It never interrupted him no matter what he said. From today on, no one would approach it to speak to it. Looking at it sitting alone in the barren desert, it was a mystery if it would feel lonely. Tang Yu finally stood in front of Kunlun Station's hab. For more than three souls, this had been his only home on Mars. It had become a habit for him to finish his daily chores, return to sprawl against the chair, ordering Tomcat to pour him water. Tomcat would at times help him and at times stay on a chair opposite him, motionless. Any urging would only make it flare up. As for my dong, her appearance on screen was like a ghost's. One never knew if she was there. At times, she wasn't in the core module and at times, she wasn't willing to appear within the camera despite being there. Tang Yu reached out his hand, placing his palm onto the Kunlun station walls. For the first time, he felt regret that he had to don such a heavy, bulky radiant armor. He could only make contact with Kunlun Station via a few layers of airtight, temperature-insulating material. If not for his gloves, he might be able to take in the smoothness, hardness, and warmth of Kunlun Station. We'll be leaving. Tang Yu leaned his helmet on Kunlun Station's wall as he closed his eyes. We'll be leaving. Behind him, the sun had finally risen above the horizon. Golden sunlight instantly tore through the mountains and desert, casting a shadow of Tang Yu's torso onto the Hab's outer walls. Goodbye. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Dead on Mars. Chapter 226, Soul 334, he said this bit of roughening up is nothing. Tang Yu got on the Mars Wanderer, sat in the front passenger seat, and buckled his seatbelt. Time to leave? Tomcat held the steering wheel, its gaze straight ahead. Time to leave. Tang Yu pressed the engine ignition and stepped down on the accelerator. As the Mars Wanderer started, its wheels trembled across the desert. They had already determined their direction. It involved traversing half of the Isidus Planitia to reach their destination. The Isidus Planitia's east-west breadth was comparable to the Darim Basin, but its north-south length was twice the latter. This also meant that Tang Yu and Tomcat needed to traverse a super-large version of the Darim Basin Desert and not get lost midway. The Wanderer slowly raised its speed as it drove stably. Tang Yu sat in his seat, the rubble on the desert beneath him sweeping by. The driver compartment didn't have any glass windows to block out the wind or any doors. All that was left was a warped frame that made it look like a convertible. Are you not going to turn back for a glance? There's nothing to see. Tang Yu sighed. We are the ones going to war. He pulled out the letter from the sun visor, pinching it in between his thumb and index finger. I've never fought a lawsuit my entire life. What kind of dispute would a lawsuit involving the entire earth be considered? A civil case or a criminal case? Is it too late for me to memorize the general principles of the civil law and the criminal law of the People's Republic of China? The criminal law of the People's Republic of China has a total of 10 chapters and 452 articles. The general principles of the civil law has a total of 9 chapters and 156 articles. It's too late to memorize them now. If you have the ability to do so, why be a grease monkey? You could have been a lawyer and embark on a path to life's pinnacle. Tomcat shook its head. Besides, how do you know that this is a case that involves criminal or civil law? Who knows, it might be road traffic safety law or economic law. Tang Yu gave a wry smile. As a man with a STEM background, nothing was worse than complicated and long-winded law articles. Then wouldn't that mean I'm doomed to failure? Tang Yu asked. Yup. 
What's the outcome for failure? Tang Yu asked. Denial for compensation? If you lose the lawsuit, wouldn't that mean that they can decline to make compensation? Tomcat hugged its forearms and used its hind legs to hold onto the steering wheel. It doesn't make sense that they compensate you despite winning the lawsuit. There aren't any philanthropists in the universe. But according to the letter, Earth was vaporized because of them. Lawyers can twist anything. You can call it an oversight on their part, thus causing the Earth to be vaporized, but they can claim that Earth was jaywalking for not following the traffic lights, Tomcat said ethereally. Who knows if they have the strongest legal department in the universe? Then wouldn't I be doomed? What's the point of going? Chill. It's not necessarily that you are doomed. What? Wise old cat, do you have some ace up your sleeve? Tang Yu was surprised. Aren't you just lacking a lawyer? Tomcat said. I have a clever trick to teach you. When you really go to court, draw Mickey Mouse on the table. Then declare to all the creatures present that this cartoon image's intellectual property is yours. After that, you will receive formidable backup. Tang Yu let out a sigh. Making idle talk was one thing, but both he and Tomcat lacked confidence. The situation they were facing was something no human in the past 10,000 years had ever encountered. The path ahead was a blur and they didn't have any experience to reference. Tang Yu didn't know if the letter was real and he doubted Tomcat's claims. He knew that the cat's acting skills were deserving of an Oscar. Although it pretended to look clueless on the surface, it was possible that it knew everything deep down. Describing it as a war wasn't wrong either. It could be foreseen that this would be an unprecedented journey of immense difficulty. Even Tomcat was of no help. Tang Yu was destined to face the battle alone. The Mars Wanderer proceeded forward on the desert as Tang Yu cocked his head to look into the distance. They had been heading west the entire time and the terrain was flat. There was almost nothing that allowed Tang Yu to focus his eyes. Soon, they were exhausted. He had no choice but to retract his gaze and blink. On the other hand, he was alarmed to realize that he had underestimated the desert. Without any precise navigation, just turning him three rounds on the spot was enough to make him lose his bearings. Want to listen to some music? Tomcat asked. You brought a music player? Tomcat nodded. Play any song as long as it's pleasant to the ears. The kind that can relieve stress. Tomcat began humming an old song, Sailor, by Zheng Zhihua. Clearly, the music player it mentioned was itself. The feeling of bitter sand blowing painfully against my face. Like a father's scolding and a mother's crying, I can never forget. The young me loved going to the seashore alone. Tomcat's voice was like a busted gong. Singing Sailor with its tone-deaf voice sounded like ghost wails. However, it sang with emotion, akin to old Wang who always hoarded the microphone at KTV sessions. Stop. Stop. Tang Yu tried to stop it. Its voice was in no way better than nails scratching against a chalkboard. Changed to another song. Changed the song. Tomcat ignored him. As it sang, it released its hind foot from the accelerator, slowing down the Mars Wanderer. What's wrong? We can no longer see Kunlun Station. Tang Yu was alarmed as he subconsciously released his seatbelt and sat up. He leaned out half his body from the driver's compartment and tried his best to look into the distance. Tomcat was still singing by itself. Always dreaming of another world at the end of the ocean. Always admiring the intrepid sailor as a real man. Always weak and frail. They bullied me, always hearing the sailor say. He said this bit of roughening up is nothing. On the distant horizon, Tang Yu could still vaguely see Kunlun Station's figure. The white, dome-shaped building was reflecting the bright sunlight. Like it, the eagle could barely be made out with the descent vehicle sitting alone there. As for the Kelami and Garage, they had already exceeded the limits of his vision. Tang Yu felt a baffling sense of pain. He suddenly regretted not taking one more look at them, but the Mars Wanderer didn't stop. It continued cruising ahead, opening up the distance. Kunlun Station was getting smaller and smaller. At that instant, a sorrow that never existed suddenly erupted in Tang Yu. 
He didn't even know where it had been hiding, thus, he was left at a loss when he was suddenly awash with such feelings. All he could do was watch as Kunlun Station gradually disappeared from his sight. From today, Tang Yu might never be able to see them again. This was a farewell in the true sense of the word, but he was powerless to change this reality. He would become rootless duckweed, a wanderer no one knew of. Tang Yu slowly bent his back and leaned against the vehicle's roof. Tomcat wore a deadpan expression without even turning its head to look back once. It continued singing, he said this bit of roughening up is nothing. Dry your tears, don't be afraid, at least we still have our dreams. He said this bit of roughening up is nothing. Dry your tears and don't question why. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Dead on Mars. Chapter 227, Soul 334, Star Chart After Tomcat had finished singing Sailor, it sang Star's Lamp, followed by Familial Love, Path to Heaven, and Tibetan Plateau. It was like a retro radio, but Tang Yu didn't have the power to choose the songs he wanted. All he could do was put up Tomcat's hoarse voice that sounded like a defunct recorder. As it drove, it kept belting out songs. And when Tomcat reached the lyrics refrain, this is the Tibetan plateau oh he. Tang Yu had no idea how he resisted the urge to jump off and escape. After Tomcat finished singing Tibetan plateau, Tang Yu imagined that it was finally going to stop. But it began humming again. Just as Tang Yu was about to say something, he was taken aback. He was very familiar with the tune hummed by Tomcat. Tang Yu nearly hummed along with it as it was tomorrow will be better. Your singing has crossed a distance of 30 Australian dollars in two minutes. It's 114 times faster than light, Tang Yu said. It's definitely the fastest in the Milky Way. The Mars Wanderer continued driving for half an hour until Tomcat stopped pressing down on the accelerator. It braked and switched off the engine. The Mars Wanderer only had 5% of its power left. That will be all for today. I've already driven for 30 kilometers. What's next is to allow the Wanderer to be recharged. Tomcat jumped off the vehicle and looked at the sun before circling around to the trailer to unload the solar panels. Tang Yu got off the vehicle and stood beside the Mars Wanderer's wheels and surveyed the area. On a boundless desert covered in saline alkali soil, there was nothing. He couldn't even find a place to hide from the sun. Thankfully, this was Mars. If this were Earth, he would definitely have suffered from dehydration and heatstroke. They thankfully had the Wanderer. A transportation device in the desert was like a rescue raft, otherwise, it was nearly impossible to walk out of this dry sea of death by human means alone. He couldn't see Kunlun Station anymore. Tang Yu only knew the direction where it was, but despite looking far into the distance, all he saw was a dark grey horizon. Tomcat unfolded the solar panels one after another and set them up on the ground. The 40 solar panels they had, covered an area spanning half a soccer field when fully set up. The entire day was left to recharging. It was 15 minutes past 8 in the morning, and until the sun set, Tang Yu and Tomcat would stay here, waiting for the charging to complete. Tang Yu connected a transformer to the backup battery, pulled out a power cable and attached it to the radiant armor. Not only did the Wanderer need to be charged, but so did Tomcat and the EVA suit. The man and cat finished setting up the solar panels, and finally, Tomcat seemed to pull a magic trick, pulling out two camp stools from the geolab. Tang Yu and Tomcat each had one as they sat there with black power cables attached to their backs. When do we set off again? Tomorrow morning, Tomcat replied. The charging needs at least 10 to 12 hours. I estimate that we will set off at 7 in the morning tomorrow. We will then head northeast another 30 kilometers. We won't steer off course, right? It's inevitable to go off course, but it will be fine as long as we correct it in time. Tomcat returned to the driver's component and rummaged for a chart which it gave Tang Yu. Tang Yu glanced at it and found it filled with numbers. He didn't understand anything other than the shortened English words, Mon, Tuesday, Wed, Thursday, Friday, Sat, and Sun. What's this? A star chart, Tomcat replied. Those numbers are the coordinates on a celestial sphere and they label the positions of the celestial bodies. Star chart? The sextant can only determine our latitude. 
It can't give our longitude directly, Tomcat explained. We have to use other means to determine our longitude. The most direct way is to look at the time. Earth has time zones, and knowing which time zone you are in allows you to know your longitude. But that's too crude. That's right. It's too crude. Tomcat nodded. Determining longitude based on time is, in essence, observing the sun's height and location. At the same time but at different longitudes, the sun's position on the celestial sphere is different. However, to ensure accuracy, it's best we don't use the sun. We should use celestial bodies that are smaller and more precise. Tang Yu unfolded the chart over his knees. The bottom even reached the floor. It was an extremely long and complicated chart. Each number was precise to four or five decimal places. It made Tang Yu recall of a table of natural logarithms attached to the end of his high school math textbook. Celestial bodies that are smaller and more precise? Yes. Tomcat pointed up. We won't use the sun as a reference point. We will be using Deimos and Phobos. I know these names, Tang Yu recalled the meaning of these two names. The moons of Mars, Mars I and Mars II? That's right. We will use the two moons of Mars as a reference. Kunlun Station has very detailed trajectory data, and they are excellent reference points. The start chart you have indicates the celestial sphere's coordinates when observing the moons from Kunlun Station. Tomcat pointed at the chart. Now that we have left Kunlun Station when we observe Deimos and Phobos at the same time, the location will be different from what's written on the star chart. We can then know our longitude and the longitudinal distance from Kunlun Station. Tang Yu paused for a second. Tomcat's description was overly simple. He had failed to digest such massive amounts of information in a short time span. Give an example. All right. For instance, at half past seven in the evening, when you observe Deimos from Kunlun Station, it's at 1.00, Tomcat elaborated. Then at the same time, we will observe it from here. Deimos's location is 1.01. The difference in the location is obvious because we are observing it from two different locations. This difference is equivalent to the time difference on Earth. Once you know the time difference, you can determine the longitude. Tang Yu slowly nodded. Tomcat really wasn't joking when it said that they were Mars's Captain Cook. Now, its words were validated. Determining one's location via celestial bodies and time was an extremely ancient method. Centuries ago, ships that crossed the ocean would even carry sufficiently precise navigation clocks for such calculations. Now, all he had in hand was a star chart. He didn't have a cell phone, a mobile connection, GPS, or any complicated navigation equipment. All he could rely on was time, stars, and math. How accurate is this? Tang Yu asked. He was a little worried about the accuracy of the navigation. Don't forget we are on Mars. The planet beneath our feet is only half Earth's diameter. The total surface area is only equivalent to the landmass on Earth, Tomcat said. A distance of 300 kilometers on Earth is negligible, but here, it's enough to accentuate the differences. As long as we calculate it precisely enough, we will be able to determine a longitude value very reliably. But how do we use this? I'll teach you when it's nighttime. This can't be used in the day. Tomcat put away the chart and looked up at the sun which was creeping over their heads. It then turned around and took out the simple sextant. What we will do next is to determine our latitude. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Dead on Mars. Chapter 228, Soul 334, Waiting for Gold Ho. Measuring latitude in the day and measuring longitude at night. Tang Yu sat on the tiny camp stool and cocked his head as he watched Tomcat hold the sextant as it kept walking around. The latter looked up at the sun, pulling a thin thread against the protractor, carefully measuring the sun's elevation angle. A weak gust of wind swirled dust across Tang Yu's feet. He moved his gaze away from Tomcat. Behind the latter's back was the black, barren soil that exposed dark-colored base rocks. Having never experienced such a moment, Tang Yu had a deep understanding of what it meant to be in, no man's land, as the three words seemed to inundate him. 
Mars was probably the biggest no man's land in the human world. No matter which direction one took for 10,000 kilometers, one wouldn't bump into a second person. This wasn't loneliness. It was desolate. Tomcat. Tang Yu looked down at his feet as he kicked a rock around. Do you know of a play named, Waiting for Gold Ho? Waiting for Gold Ho? Tomcat turned its head. What's that? Why would one wait for snot, even if it's gold? It's a comedy that's very famous. It's about two people sitting under a tree waiting for something. Tang Yu thought and said, they keep waiting and waiting, and in the end, the thing they were waiting for doesn't come. That's Waiting for Godot, a tragicomedy play written by Samuel Beckett. It has great significance in the world of arts. Tomcat shook its head in exasperation. What do you mean waiting for gold ho? This wasn't the first time Tomcat was worried about Tang Yu's lack of culture. All right, all right. Godot then. Tang Yu felt that he and Tomcat were like two desert travelers waiting for a public bus. Just like Vladimir and Estragon in waiting for Godot, they were sitting at a bus stop at the ends of the world. On one side was the road and on the other side was an endless desert. The bus stop indicated that the bus would pass by, but no one knew when the bus would come, or what kind of bus it was. People didn't even know if the bus existed. The bus might appear across the horizon the next second, but equally, it might never appear. The letter of unknown origins that Tang Yu was holding had prompted him to take this trip of no return. It was all for that speck of hope. They say they can restore Earth, Tang Yu asked, but how are they going to do it? Perhaps they will replicate Earth based on all its data, Tomcat replied. There will always be such intelligence in the universe that can perfectly record all the data of the fundamental particles on Earth and then replicate them in their original states. But wouldn't this violate the most basic principle of physics? Tang Yu asked. Which one? Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, Tang Yu replied. An observer is unable to determine the location and speed of a fundamental particle at the same time. Uh, Tomcat pondered. To be honest, this question exceeds what I know. I have no idea what the most fundamental matters that line the universe are. After Earth vanished, human physics came to a complete stop, but advanced intelligence might have gone further than humans had. They might have made even greater breakthroughs and had obtained the microscope God used when creating the world. Microscope used during the creation? A method unknown to humans, one that can peep into the deepest secrets of the universe. Tomcat shrugged. I believe it will definitely be more advanced than a primitive tool that only relies on accelerating particles. There's nothing stopping us from being bold in our imaginations. Perhaps they are completely in a dimension above us? If they have the ability to enter a higher dimension, then time is just a piece of paper they can easily manipulate. Tomcat pointed at the letter in Tang Yu's hand. Toward such a civilization, we are like fixed frames on a table. They can casually take out one frame and change the instantaneous reality of a particular moment. They can rewrite history. Tang Yu couldn't help but shiver. Perhaps they don't even have the concept of history. Unimaginable. Don't even bother trying. Tomcat put away the sextant. I don't suggest you try inferring that to the owner behind the letter. The human brain is unable to formulate something that exceeds your knowledge. Tang Yu was taken aback. No matter how strange and odd an entity your imagination can produce, it's still a result of the known elements in your brain. Think about all the monster and supernatural movies you've watched, they are all modified and merged from earthlings, Tomcat said. Ancients say that the way a dragon is drawn is to have a camel's head, deer horns, snake's neck, tortoise eyes, fish scales, tiger paws, eagle talons, and ox ears. It's the same rationale. To date, extraterrestrial intelligence that humans can imagine and draw can't escape this framework. Regardless of you imagining that aliens have four heads and eight arms, whether a solar year is 480 days, whether they will circle around a mushroom god at the end of the year celebrating the rise of the third moon, they are just a projection and modification of human society, Tomcat said. Tang Yu widened his eyes as he slowly nodded. He wasn't sure what he could say. It wasn't common for him to let his imagination go wild usually. 
In his mind, extraterrestrials were probably like James Cameron's avatar. They were tall with blue skin as they rode on chariots, using spears and arrows to fight battleships. As such, Tang Yu's imagination of the lawsuit was of the defendant sitting there alone a beautiful blue-skinned person with patterns drawn across its body in preparation for war. On its back were a bow and arrows. That's why I think that all works that try to caricature another life form are pointless, Tomcat said. With the creator being human, it can never escape the human imagination. You can only use what's at your fingertips and try your best to make it look odd. But no matter what you do, it's actually just another version of yourself. But Tomcat shattered Tang Yu's imaginations. It told Tang Yu that such poor imagination was too lacking. This means. I'll be fighting a lawsuit against a completely unknown existence. Yes. I'm already going to engage in a battle with so little preparation, and now you're telling me that the enemy is a completely unimaginable existence? What about know the enemy and know yourself? Tang Yu widened his eyes. What's the point in fighting then? Even if I drew Mickey Mouse and get assistance, there's no way I can beat them. We're doomed. Doom isn't necessary. Tomcat gently twirled its whisker. It only had one whisker to twirl. Sir Cat, do you still have any other wise strategies? Tang Yu asked. You have to teach me how to defeat the enemy. Lean your ear over. Tomcat beckoned with its paw. Tang Yu leaned in. If Mickey fails, draw Mario on the table, Tomcat said. Then, declare to all the living beings present that this cartoon image's intellectual property belongs to you. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Dead on Mars. Chapter 229, Soul 334, Humanity's Joy and Sadness Aren't Interlinked. Tang Yu and Tomcat sat back to back on a rock as they looked up at the sky. I feel as if we are gypsies, Tang Yu said softly, carrying a huge covered truck as we wander about. Overhead was the pitch black sky that seemed to be made of velvet. The starry sky seemed to encase them at the bottom of an overturned bowl. The rocks and desert under the night sky had a red glow as though they were silently burning embers. This was a grand vista that struck deep into one's heart. Beneath the cold night sky was a glowing red planet. Here, the small was small and the big was even bigger. I'm not a gypsy. Tomcat held the star chart as it counted the stars in the sky. I'm a gypsy cat. Have you swapped your pressurized canister? Did so some time ago. Tang Yu patted the life support system behind him. The Radiant Armor's compressed air canister had ended its historic duty that evening. After the oxygen had been depleted, Tang Yu switched the emergency oxygen unit. The Radiant Armor EVA suit had an oxygen candle interface that allowed Tang Yu to carry it on his back. The emergency oxygen system was a long rectangular body 60 centimeters long. It was highly integrated as solid alkaline perchlorate salts were sealed in a cylindrical metal vessel. Together with an electrical ignition switch and a gas compression filter, the design was rather compact. As long as Tang Yu opened the protective seal and used his strength to pull the pull tab at the bottom of the lid, the chemical would produce oxygen under the effects of the catalysts. The oxygen would then be moisturized and filtered before entering the radiant armor's helmet. The carbon dioxide that Tang Yu breathed out would be absorbed by the lithium hydroxide monohydrate. The carbon dioxide absorption system's condition would directly be displayed on the radiant armor's wrist terminal. Green indicated good conditions and red indicated that the chemicals were almost depleted. Have you found them? Tang Yu asked. I've found them. Tomcat looked down at the star chart and drew a tick. Are we heading in the right direction? Of course, Tomcat replied. We will have to continue traveling northeast for 30 kilometers tomorrow morning. We will correct the deviations tomorrow evening to ensure that we arrive at the given coordinates. When I was on Earth, I learned how to read the stars, but I've already forgotten them all, Tang Yu said. Old Wang said that it doesn't matter since we have long stopped using such primitive means to determine direction. In fact, it wasn't difficult either. We just needed to find Polaris. However, Mars doesn't have an obvious marker like Polaris, Tomcat languidly leaned against Tang Yu's back. It stretched out its front paw and pointed at the sky. Do you see that huge cross? 
Huge cross. Tang Yu turned his head. Left of your sky. Do you see it? That bright cross is Cygnus. The most famous massive black hole, Cygnus X-1 is there. It emits copious amounts of extremely powerful X-rays. It's a spinning lighthouse of the Milky Way. Tomcat pointed it out to Tang Yu as he traced the direction of Tomcat's claw. Amidst the stars, he made out a distorted cross. Form a line with Cygnus's head with the closest star of Cepheus. The midpoint of this line is north, Tomcat said. We are currently facing north, making our left west. Kunlun Station is towards our southwest. See that rock? Kunlun Station is in that direction. If you somehow get lost on Mars, walk in that direction all the way and you will return home. Tang Yu sighed. Tomcat, we no longer have a home. Tomcat blinked. We are aliens, Tang Yu said. We are stranded on Mars, strange creatures from an unknown alien planet. No one can discover us, hear us, or understand us. Humanity's joy and sadness aren't interlinked. That's right, Tang Yu said. Back when I was letting my imagination run wild, I thought how nice it would be if one's emotions could be shared. That way, no matter how sad something is, as long as it's equally distributed across 10,000 people, a 100,000 people, or a million people, each person will on average experience a millionth of the sadness. If that happened, the world wouldn't see tears again. But there wouldn't be smiles either. Tang Yu looked blankly at the starry sky. Occasionally, he still imagined that the United Space Station was above him, hurtling across his head. It's late. It's time to rest. Tomcat nudged Tang Yu. You can sleep for seven hours. The radiant armor can operate normally for eight hours, so you need to wake up an hour in advance to charge it. The time now is 10. You will have to wake up before 5 tomorrow to recharge it. Tang Yu yawned and stole a glance at it. What about you? Do you need to recharge tomorrow morning? I'll continue stargazing. Tomcat sat on the rock. Tang Yu got up and headed back to sleep. The Geolab on the Mars Wanderer had a sleeping bag, but it was only used to line the floor. Tang Yu had no way of crawling into it while donning the radiant armor. They couldn't sleep outside as the temperature at night would keep dropping until it reached minus 80 degrees Celsius. Such low temperatures drastically wore on the temperature control, causing the power needed to increase. They had brought the RTG along, and it was able to maintain the Geolab's temperature at around 0 degrees Celsius. In contrast with the outside world, this was undoubtedly a paradise in spring. Tang Yu crawled into the Geolab and closed the hatch. Tomcat sat on the rock, the star chart flat across its knees. This cat sat there like a statue for a very long time. Cats were strange creatures. At times, they would sit by the window motionless, a glint in their eyes suddenly appearing without anyone understanding why. Perhaps it was a baffling sense of melancholy or a strange level of silence. At times, one would suspect that they possessed similar amounts of intelligence as humans. They often traversed the walls and rooftops, looking down from above at human society. Tomcat naturally lacked the ability to jump onto a roof or its short and fat body would probably smash through the roof. Cats would believe that a meatball chariot had fallen from the sky before being sent into a tizzy. However, it felt that it was just like the other cats, they were all pixies. A short and fat pixie was still a pixie. It didn't accept any claims against that. A meteor suddenly streaked across the sky, brightening for a short instant. Tomcat blinked. It was about time for it to rest. The temperature was dropping and it too found low temperatures a hazardous environment that would drastically shorten its lifespan. Tomcat got up and returned to the Geolab's outer hatch. The airtight lab had two hatches just like the airlock. Tomcat crawled in and closed the outer hatch before opening the inner hatch. The cramped Geolab was dark due to a lack of light. It was nearly pitch black apart from the faint green light emitted from the radiant armor indicators. Tang Yu was sitting against the wall sleeping, his head bent. He didn't spread the sleeping bag against the floor but instead hugged it tightly. When Tomcat entered, it turned around to seal the hatch before snuggling close to Tang Yu. Slowly, 
it curled into a huge furball and closed its eyes. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to Dead on Mars. Chapter 230, Soul 335, Greatest Sinner in Human History Let's paddle together and the boat will push away the waves. The Mars Wanderer was driving across the desert as Tomcat belted out its high notes. Even the thin Martian atmosphere could hardly stop Tomcat's demonic voice from drilling into one's head. Shut up! Tang Yu roared angrily. Tomcat shot a glance at him and continued looking ahead. If you don't wish to be disturbed by anything, the best way is to become part of it. Sing with me. You know the lyrics, right? All Chinese can sing this. The beautiful white tower is reflected on the sea, green trees, and red walls all around. The boat floats on the water, and a cool wind blows against our face. Tang Yu made his contempt obvious, adamant about not lowering himself to be on Tomcat's level. Get lost, I won't sing along with you. Ten minutes later. Even if fate wanders. Even if fate is full of twists and turns. Even if fate makes life bland from threats. Don't cry or abandon yourself. I will be with you forever. Tang Yu stood on the front passenger seat, waving his arms like a conductor of an orchestra. He was bellowing out at the world with his crazy-like voice. Ahohe, he sang Haken Lee's Red Sun with gusto as though he was a superstar on tour. He crossed the desert with the Mars Wanderer and although there wasn't a single soul, Tang Yu seemed to see crowds of people standing to the sides as they roared with excitement. Fell I did, tears hidden by the rainy night. I've survived all the twists and turns of life. Tang Yu sang loudly, but it wasn't obvious whether he was singing Cantonese or Japanese. As Tomcat shook its leg and sang as an accompaniment, their voices were a perfect match. The man seemed to be scratching a blackboard while the cat seemed to be hitting a gong. They were reveling in high spirits. Finally, Tang Yu finished the last line with his croaking voice as Tomcat gave a loud round of applause. I told you that you had talent. It was the second soul since they had left Kunlun Station. Based on Tomcat's estimation of distance, the straight line between them and Kunlun Station was about 50 kilometers. Early in the morning, Tang Yu and Tomcat had woken up to pack up. They recharged the radiant armor and Tomcat before moving the solar panels onto the Mars Wanderer. The path they drove on was uneven and bumpy. With the Wanderer lacking any suspension, Tang Yu suffered intense vibrations while sitting in the front. Tang Yu took out the map from a compartment and unfolded it. No matter which angle he looked at it from, he couldn't understand a thing. The map drawn by Tomcat was something only it could understand. Is this a map of the Isidus Planitia? Tang Yu pointed at the distorted lines on the map. What are these lines? Contours? No, Tomcat said. You are holding it upside down. Tang Yu turned it around. He still couldn't make it out. You should at least label a direction and have a legend and scale. A usable map also needs a coordinate grid and numbers used for orientation, Tang Yu frowned as he grumbled. He surveyed his surroundings, hoping to find some noticeable landmark. But what the hell did you draw? Tomcat took a side glance. Oh, you got the wrong thing. That's not a map. That's the outcome of a simulation result. Simulation? What does it simulate? The distribution of the United Space Station's fragments after it crashed, Tomcat said softly. Tang Yu's hand trembled. A massive object like the United Space Station wouldn't be completely vaporized in the atmosphere. There will be large amounts of fragments that fall to the ground. I've thought of gathering the remains and at least give it a home, Tomcat added. But unfortunately, the spot it crashed is just too far from us. We have no way of finding it. When, did you draw this? Second soul after the space station's crash. Tang Yu stared blankly into the distance. On the horizon beyond his sights, the space station's charred remains were scattered across the desert. If I can win the lawsuit. Will the United Space Station return? I don't know. Tomcat shook its head. That letter said that they will compensate me for all my losses if I were to win. The United Space Station is definitely counted as well? 
Every living and non-living object in the United Space Station is counted, right? Tang Yu asked. That godlike higher dimensional intelligent beings can extract the United Space Station the moment before it crashes and rewrite history, am I right, Tomcat? I don't know, Tang Yu. Don't ask me. I know nothing. Tomcat was clearly feeling down. Tang Yu was somewhat disappointed. He knew that Tomcat couldn't give him an answer to his question, but he still hoped for one. However, Tomcat could only be honest. I'm very sorry, Tang Yu. I'm unable to give you any answers. You are Estragon and I'm Vladimir. We have been waiting for Godot, but none of us knows what Godot is. Isn't Godot in waiting for Godot hope? No, Tomcat said. It was never hope. Tang Yu leaned back into his seat and stared blankly ahead. All he saw was rocks and sand that repeated endlessly. They were inching closer to their destination, but what lay waiting at the destination of the Mars Wanderer's journey? Tomcat was unable to give him an answer. Even if the contents of the letter were authentic, Tang Yu had to face a godlike intelligent civilization and defeat it. The former sounded incredulous while the latter sounded like fool's talk. What could Tang Yu rely on to defeat a powerful intelligence that had the ability to interfere and even control time? This was probably a trip destined to failure Tang Yu was mentally prepared for that. He believed it was the same with Tomcat, but neither one of them said it out loud. If I fail, will I be the greatest sinner in human history? Tomcat fell silent for a few seconds. Yes. You could vindicate me a little at such times. I don't have to, Tomcat said. It's because there's no one to blame you. There's no need for you to be responsible to anyone. With regard to this question, unless you can successfully save the earth, anything you do makes you a sinner. You could have ignored the letter and lived your days. By burning that ridiculous letter, the world would immediately be restored to normal. Have you heard of the trolley problem? Tang Yu nodded. The one with a trolley barreling down tracks and on the tracks there's an innocent person tied to it, and on the other track are five brats. And it happens that you have a plunger to switch the set of tracks? Yes. Tomcat nodded. Unless you are Superman, capable of lifting the trolley and throwing it away, otherwise, anything you do is wrong. Inaction is also wrong. When that happens, what should you do? What can I do? Tang Yu sighed. I'd probably return home to unclog my toilet. Please subscribe to A7 English Podcasts and enjoy listening every day with us. Thank you.